So it is Sunday afternoon in my lab, and I have the entire four-story building to myself. As usual, I like to record these videos on the weekends because there's no one knocking at my door and there's no one calling me on the phone. And today I was reviewing the clinical trials that I need to run, and I thought it's a good time for me to share my plans with you. Now, if you watch my videos, you know that I have over a hundred treatments that I would like to test, but that's not possible, so I have to prioritize. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna tell you about the top eight treatments that I believe should be entered into clinical trials right now. Now these are for fibromyalgia, they're for myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, Gulf War illness, and long COVID. And I'm focusing on neuroinflammation, which is kind of my area other scientists that are looking at other systems of the body and other pathophysiological mechanisms, they'll have their own list of treatments they want to test. I'm going to show you the list as well, and uh, they're kind of ranked at the top are the treatments that are most difficult to study right now. They're the trials that are most difficult to conduct, and uh, usually because the treatments are hard to get a hold of or hard to use. And at the bottom are the compounds that are very easily obtained by the public right now. So let's get started. I'm going to give just probably five sentences for each one, but most of these I've done individual videos on in the past, and you can find those on this channel. I'll put a link at the end of this video. So first is dextronaltrexone, and this is the most difficult substance to test because it doesn't exist anywhere in the world, to my knowledge. I'm trying to identify a chemist who's willing to synthesize some of this, and I need it made for human use, which adds to the complexity. But I think it's worth the effort because this substance shows great potential at calming central inflammation with minimal side effects. And so I will keep working on this one. The next one is psilocybin, and this is the active ingredient in psilocybic mushrooms. This one is complex to test because it's a Schedule I substance, which requires a lot of regulatory oversight. But we are running a small trial in fibromyalgia right now, so it is certainly possible to run these. Um, and I am, just to be clear, I'm not recommending anyone go out and try to get a hold of this substance. It is illegal in the United States outside of research. Um, but its unique effects on specific serotonin channels make this very interesting uh, to me. We just have to be really cautious with the progress because there are risks of harm if it's used inappropriately or at the wrong dosage or if it's used in the wrong individuals. So the next one is methylene blue, and this is a strange one. It's used as a medical dye but it also has beneficial effects on mitochondrial function and energy production and, and also oxygen delivery throughout the body and throughout the brain. And so this is really interesting for MECFS and long COVID and Gulf War illness. Uh, this one is not uh, particularly hard to test in a research protocol, but it just needs proper medical supervision. Now, the next one is focused transcranial ultrasound. I've done several videos on this one, and it uses intense focused sound waves to target neuronal and microglia functioning in the brain. It's not really available for patient use right now, but the equipment and the expertise to do this work, they're available at my institution and other institutions. And so I'm, I'm looking at the best protocols to try right now. Uh, next up is nalmaphene which is a mu opioid antagonist that's used for opioid addiction, but it also modulates the microglia cells that I think are uh, causing a lot of these chronic pain and fatigue and cognitive disorders. Um, so I think that nalmaphene may reduce central inflammation and it might, it's untested, but it might work better than lotus naltrexone, which is the next one below on the list. But nalmaphene is a little bit harder to test. Actually, it's quite a bit harder to test because the oral form is not FDA approved for use in the United States. Only research scientists can get a hold of it right now. Now, that's a different story in Europe where it's more available, but even in that case, we haven't worked out the proper dosage yet, and so I can't recommend people try it right now. So next is Lotus Naltrexone, and this is the one you're most likely to have heard about before. It's the agent I've been talking about and looking at for the longest time, like over 15 years. 
but it still hasn't undergone a proper parallel group clinical trial with hundreds of people. And so we can't say for sure whether or not it helps, despite tons of anecdotal evidence. There are pilot trials going on right now, and I'm still trying to secure funding for a strong clinical trial. Now, this one is easier for patients to get uh, and easier than anything else I've mentioned up to this point, but it still requires a prescription and it is off label. So your physician may not be willing to prescribe it. So everything so far has required, the only way you could get a hold of it would be to be in a research protocol or in some cases getting a physician prescription. Now, the last two are supplements that can be secured through normal commercial routes without a prescription. Um, even so, I got to say for these last two, more research is needed to figure out the benefits and the risks. So the first one is palmitol ethanolamide or PEA. And I think this would be particularly helpful for fibromyalgia because it has uh, some pretty clear effects on chronic pain, but there's growing evidence that it can help with overall peripheral inflammation and even neuroinflammation. And so there's reason to believe it would help many other fatigue and cognitive and mood problems as well. So I'm eager to run proper clinical trials on this one to see who it might help. And the last one is pycnogenol or French maritime pine bark. And this is an interesting botanical. And I have pilot data suggesting good effects on pain and fatigue. This one is pretty easy to get. Um, but again, as with everything else, there's very little scientific data on optimal dose and, and benefits and risks in people with chronic inflammatory disorders. I think it's a safe enough compound, but it just hasn't been tested in the diseases that I study. And so we don't know how it will ultimately work until we do the trials. So people could try this now, but as I'm saying, it's, it's experimental use of a compound. So I can't really uh, recommend it right now, but I intend to test it as soon as I can. So that's it. Those are the top eight treatments I would like to trial right now. Uh, honestly, I would run all eight of these simultaneously. The limitation is just funding, pure and simple. It's uh, After trying for a long time, it's almost impossible to get funding for large clinical trials without having a pharmaceutical company take an interest and in taking over the process. And that's not a route I'm really interested in taking. So I will continue to find funding where I can so I can run these studies. That means really the bad news, kind of bad news, good news. The bad news is it's way harder to get these studies funded than it should be. The good news is we have dozens of promising treatments that can be tested. So there's promise that we have things that will ultimately work. So that's it for today. I hope everyone has a good week and I will be back here soon. Bye.